I'm very pleased to get a chance to speak with the project lead of the Honda Prologue, John Wong. And uh, that's effectively in uh, American engineering parlance, that's like chief engineer, correct. yeah? Yeah, correct. And speaking of American parlance, you were actually a little bit closer to the co-development part of this project. You were actually working in Warren for part of this, is that correct? Correct, I, and I still am. So um, the core team for the prologue actually moved to Michigan to work with GM every day. So we had core members from uh, uh, Japan and Ohio, and we moved up okay. to, to Southeast Michigan. Okay. Yeah, and we worked at the tech center in Warren every day. Yes, and it is a beautiful, uh, beautiful place to be, but it is not Marysville, Ohio. No, it, is. no, it, isn't. no <laughs> it isn't. So can you speak to a little bit of this co-development? You're starting with fundamentals that are the same for the uh, Chevrolet Blazer, but then it's your job to make this distinctly Honda. So how do you marry being co-developed and then being distinctly a Honda product? Great question. So the, you know, the, the benefits of platform sharing is speed to market and uh, efficiencies and uh, economies of scale. So really, we didn't want to change the Altium platform, right? So we want to take the best parts of that, right? It's a great suspension, great performance, great range. So um, how you differentiate is by the top half. And by, and by using each brand's different character and different design. So the platform is an Altium platform, but the top hat was done by Honda. So the platform lead and the full vehicle integration was General Motors, and then the top hat engineering and styling the design was Honda. Okay. Yeah. And the Altium platform, the ZDX, the Acura ZDX, that's also Altium platform. Is it the same platform as the Prologue, or, th or are we talking about two different platforms that both started at Altium? It, it's, it's still rooted in that Altium platform, but the Altium platform does have a lot of bandwidth, a lot of okay. capabilities and modularity. So depending on what Honda wanted or what Acura wanted and maybe the other GM brands, you can pick. So you know, on the Prologue, it's more of a mainstream, young family, active lifestyle car. So and we wanted them to transition er, or give them a great option to move from a CRV hybrid or an Accord hybrid. So we kept it with a bigger, so we wanted a bigger motor in the front to have more of a front wheel drive kind of dynamics and feeling so that, the, because that's what they're used to. Yeah. So yeah. we have a bigger motor always in the front, whether it's front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And the all wheel drive is a smaller motor in the back that only helps when traction is needed. Understood, understood. It's the Altium platform and that means you had general motor suspension geometry mm -hmm. and general motor structure, but a big part of Honda's was the ABC crash structure. Mm -hmm. Was the Altium platform, was, did you guys have any influence so that it met your, your, your crash safety standards or like, I don't know, like torsion, uh, you know, mm -hmm. rigidity limits or anything like, like, did you guys have discussions at that level to make sure that it met Honda standards? Yeah, you know, in the overall, vehicle kind of construct or concept and targets. We wanted the highest safety ratings. We wanted the best torsional rigidity and, and stiffness. So those were baked in from the beginning. So each side had to meet their side's requirements to, to deliver that as a full vehicle. Yeah, and because this technical partnership is, is more than 10 years old now. So it, it, there's been that time to have that co-development conversation. But uh, uh, that's really interesting to hear those insights. So well, let's shift over to that top hat now, mm -hmm. to the differences. Um, it's the same core suspension geometry, mm -hmm. but different tuning. Yeah, so we were, at, at the beginning of the project, we kind of aligned on kind of the dynamic and dynamic targets and Honda feeling that we wanted to impart. So we, Honda brought Honda vehicles up to the GM proving ground so we could drive together. Ah, okay. And then we ha would have a common language, right, to understand because each company measures or judges things differently. So you have to kind of do it together. And then we, everyone knew what we wanted to deliver. So then we said, okay, based on that kind of feeling we want, these are the best parts to modify. So yeah. in the Prologue's instance, it was the power steering settings and the spring and dampers. So we focused on that. And we had Honda engineers from Japan and Ohio fly up there, drive up there and work with the GM engineers and the suppliers to really tune and iterate to make sure that it imparted the Honda uh, distinct feeling. And, then, and that's because hard points are set. That's built into the structure. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and when I say hard points, it's like 
where does the spring go? Where does yeah. the damper go? Those types of things. Yeah, and those but are then really the architectural parts you don't want to touch. Exactly. Yeah. And then that sets kinematics to a certain extent as well. So how the suspension physically yeah. moves. But then you have full control over bushings, and then shocks play a massive role yeah. in the feel, yeah. as do spring rights. So um, was that work was that work easy to do, or was there another layer of difficulty because it wasn't the usual process that Honda was used to? Yeah, I mean, well, it it would be, it'll be like if um, we were making a Civic Coupe out of a Civic sedan. So you know, you, the architecture is set. Yeah. So you, then you just have you know you what tools or what leverage you right. have. Right, you, yeah. you you're confined yeah. and you just work with what you yeah, have. Okay. That's basically what engineering is all about. Exactly right. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's so like here are my constraints yeah. and let's build. Here are my targets. Here are yeah. my constraints. Go at it. Right? Gotcha. So yeah. It doesn't matter if it's GM or Honda. That's what you. But that's what engineers do, and that's what they do well. Yeah. So, uh, what what were the targets? What were you hoping to achieve with the Prologue, in terms of how the car uh, handled and rides, how the car feels with the powertrain? Uh, you know, uh, what what were those targets? What were you aiming for? So we really wanted to have the dynamic qualities be consistent with the ICE cars we have today. So Pilot, Passport, CRV, and have that experience when the customer is ready to move um, and test drive, it feels natural, it feels familiar. And that was really what we wanted to do. We didn't want to make something crazy or new because the name says Prologue, it's the beginning. So yeah. we really yep. didn't, we didn't need to prove ourselves or anything like that. We wanted something that customer could immediately drive and be familiar and accept. And that was really what we wanted to do. Yeah. And and what's what were the I'm trying to figure out I, I'm I'm curious what was hardest to achieve but maybe the better way to say it what what is the achievement that you're most proud of with the prologue what yeah. what did, what is the aspect that you really feel like that came out just as I wanted yeah I think the ride is fantastic MVH or the noise vibration hardness is fantastic the audio system is fantastic so everything you know the from a f from the features or the design the design is fantastic you know it's, it's got the Honda's kind of simple but sophisticated design but at the same time it's very aggressive and it, and it has a very new proportion and a silhouette that really looks like a concept car yeah can we speak about that just a little bit the, what made you guys decide this is a little bit longer than but a little bit shorter than mm -hmm. a passport what how did you guys decide on those dimensions? Yeah, because what we were going after was more of a, a youthful, younger family with active lifestyle. So we, w we knew we wanted a mid-size CUV. Um, but with the Altium platform or an EV platform, we had more flexibility, more options. Already, because of a, a large battery, the wheelbase is going to be longer. So then why not push him as far forward and rearward as we could, get the shortest w overhang we could. Yeah, right? absolutely. And then once you have that kind of proportion, why not lower the roof so that you really have a sleek silhouette? Otherwise, it's going to be really tall and jacked up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So really gave us that flexibility too. Really, the designers were so happy because <laughs> this well, has the proportion that they always want. And you know, the the lead designer always jokes that you know when they release a design sketch, and we released it I think last year. Um, he he jokes that. He didn't have to cheat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, the you're, sketch is exactly what we delivered. You're yeah. talking about constraints. Yeah. Well, the constraints of a designer for an EVs are wide open yeah. because the packaging is so much more compressed. Yeah. And that was one thing I noticed when I opened the hood of the Prologue. The Prologue's hood is already, it's not that large. Yeah. But then you open it up and there's huge amounts of space. You know, the, the controller and everything is tucked way back and way low. And you could very clearly see right to the ground. You could see the motor mount clearly. And you just realize how much more compact yeah. and then that all gives, these components are. And you're right. And that gives the designer so much more flexibility to place the hood or the fender or the yeah. lights wherever they like. Yeah. It's really, I think it's really liberating for them yeah. to be able to have that power. And that's also an engineering advantage when you get to center of gravity, yeah. Polar moment of inertia. Yeah. Yep. And Those are focus, advantages. Yeah, and when you can focus all that hardware concentrated, then you have less wiring. Yeah, you, you know, yeah. so the routing is easier, so the interior is bigger, or you less use less copper. Yeah. So it yeah. really does open up opportunities. Yeah. And did I'm curious? Did did being able to compact and get it towards the center? Did that allow? Because it did. It did feel like a very comfortable ride, mm -hmm. and it did feel. A little bit soft, more softly sprung than I was expecting. Is that 
was that is like the package allowed you to give a little bit more for ride that way? Yeah, it, it just gave us more flexibility and opportunities to make it smooth and sophisticated and quiet, you know, and 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 we took advantage of that that kind of opportunity as an EV that is so quiet and smooth and 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 the battery absorbs so much of the noise, you yeah. know, that that we could really focus on other things like rattle and squeak or yeah. the Bose audio system. So you can what really you need to focus on because yeah, yeah. you don't have an engine to drown it out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So then on the Bose, yeah, it sounds great l loud, but even at low volume, you can hear everything because there's no engine or yeah. no vibrations or other noises. And we did spend a lot of time at highway speeds when we drove it, and you know, I was impressed at how well. It's not like it was a tomb in there or a library, I should say. <laughs> but, uh, but it, it, you know, there was road noise in that, but you guys did a really good job to take out whistles and squeaks and rattles, and I was impressed with that. And that is something you have to pay more attention to yeah. in an EV. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing you mentioned that uh, I'm curious to learn more about is going front motor, front wheel drive biased. What, what's the motivation behind that? Again, to kind of give the dynamic performance familiarity, really, to our current Honda customers. You know, we don't, since the S2000, we haven't had a rear-wheel drive Honda, so there wasn't really, for us, a point of making a rear-wheel drive Honda. You know, we wanted a CRV customer or a Passport or Pilot customer with that experience, with that dynamic kind of performance or tendencies yeah. to kind of carry over, so that's right. familiar. And when you have an electric motor setup, you have more flexibility in terms of like chassis layout of having, you know, a transversely mounted versus a longitudinally mounted engine. So it's dictating whether it's a front wheel drive base or a yeah. rear wheel drive base up. With electric BVs, you have more flexibility there, but you chose yeah. just so that the char Honda characteristics, because you guys are much more famous for your Civics Accords and CRVs than your S2000s. Right. Yeah. But so you have that front wheel drive kind of character we wanted, but yeah. at the same time, with an EV platform and what the Altium platform could provide, the steering rack is still in the front, so you get that big kind of rear rear drive kind of proportion, right? With that dash to axle ratio. You yeah. can still deliver that, but it's front wheel based. Yeah. So really, that highlights what an EV platform can provide. Gotcha. Yeah. Is it simple math to say that the front motor is 212 uh, horsepower 236 pound feet and then for the all-wheel drive setup the rear motor is the rest of it or is it not no, just as simple as yeah, that? It's not as simple as that because so each motor is rated for a certain power or torque but what it can draw out of the battery at the same time defines maximum ma voltage yeah, allowed. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that defines the total power and torque output. Understood. So yeah. when, when, you, when you put those don't just subtract out of the front-wheel yeah. drive yeah. outputs yeah. to get the rear yeah. and uh, yeah well um, it was a, a great driving experience, and it was a profound driving experience in some of the heavy rains we had. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the weather didn't cooperate yeah. with us this week. Well, but in a way it did, because mm -hmm. it gave us an opportunity to feel yeah. that out a little yeah. bit more. But I really appreciate learning some more of those details and, um, and learning a little bit more about how that interplay with GM and Honda is working. So John, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you, I appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Thank you.